Welcome back, everyone, to another 0k exhibition match. This... Whoa! Okay, that's not what I... That, that, whoa, 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 whoa. Must have hit something by accident in the replay thing. That was not intended. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so it's going to pause at some point randomly in the middle of the match because I must have clicked somewhere in the replay bar. Anyway... So, it's going to be a match between Saniac and The Warning. Saniac over Hovercraft. The Warning going for Ampbots, and we're on Doom Patrol Redux. AMAP. That is definitely good for both of these factories, although admittedly the version we're playing here I think is a little bit less good for bots. It's hard to tell. It's more that the center I'm pretty sure is not as deep as it used to be. Not 100% sure. Hard to check. Anyway, the center was in earlier versions deep enough that bots couldn't really get through but I think this version you could use any factory and it'd be okay. But both players are using sea-based factories. Saniac with a scouting bolus. Daring move would kind of make sense. It's a lot of money or a lot of metal to put into a single raider but I can understand why they would go for that because well that is a lot of that is a lot of potential firepower, especially with the slow damage. And it is a tough scout. Like, definitely is going to be a lot better at getting in and getting out than a dagger would be. Honestly, I do expect we are going to see Bolas is used more frequently as something of a scouting unit because of its weight. The problem with dagger is that it's quite frail and it doesn't deal a lot of damage quickly. So it can't really deal with things unless you have a bunch of daggers. So yeah, if you have half a dozen daggers, that's fine, but each dagger is like 80 metal. So you have 80 metal, like, to do any decent damage, ooh. To do any decent damage, you need like 6 or 7, which is like 5 or 600 metal. As opposed to, say, one duck getting rid of one quill and massively slowing down Saniac's expansion over to the western side of the map. Leaving the warning in a great position for gaining their, well, maintaining their advantage. Saniac rather surprisingly doing a lot of energy reclaim. It's not a bad idea, it's just a little bit surprising given the fact that they aren't expanding that quickly. The Warning is expanding a lot faster than Saniac is. Granted, the Warning is low on energy and that is becoming a problem. But at this point, the Warning could just do the same thing as Saniac, start harvesting trees. That would be effective enough. Like that would put the warning back in a position where they are not accessing, although admittedly they do need to start getting their hover their ambot factory some additional production power. Like, this isn't enough. Their their commander or a builder or something, some something needs to get back here, start actually assisting. I mean the warning at least is building up enough solar collectors to avoid excess as best they can. It's not going to be perfect, but it's not going to be terrible. On the other hand, Arch is coming in here. Archer duck to get rid of the, this little lake coastal expansion that not really sure what the idea was there. Very risky coming in from Saniac. They managed to get their metal close to our part of the warning, but now they're possibly going to lose another quill. And that is the prime target, and well done. Warning comes in there, gets rid of another quill. Completely taken out the eastern expansion. Saniac Commander will probably try to retake that. But it still slows things down. And the warning so far, they have not lost a conch, I don't think. Oh, that might be a conch right there, actually. Nope, that's a duck. The other hand, Arx is coming in the north. Oh, are they? No, that. Yeah, they are. Really? Oh, but that's not for cost, though. Yes, they did manage to get rid of a mace, but A, their archers aren't the classist raiders, and B, that was a lot of archers for a single mace. Not really worth the cost. At the same time, Saniac doing a great job getting rid of the expansion over to the eastern side of the map. Bull is definitely paying for itself, though the warning now finally getting their production on. Par-ish with their expenditure. Are they? 
No, they haven't. Where is their conch going? All right, well, they probably should put their factor on repeat build. Uh, that's the thing. Repeat build... Like, honestly, I'd recommend repeat build and auto assist enabled are two things that just help a ton in making sure you don't excess. Assuming you have the energy and you're, you know, not doing other... Well, mostly assuming you have the energy. That's, that's the biggest thing. But yeah, make sure any builders you make will use their build power on the factory. So yeah. Wait, Diamond, what are you talking about? Okay, so Diamond in the chat is using MOs to indicate, I think storage leads to resign? Well, like, storage leads to throwing in the towel, but I don't see any storage built. Both players are actually being pretty economical with their, with their construction, except the warning, of course, only just now getting production. Oh! My bad. Diamond Fenoy pointing out that the emote is the excess emote. It's stuff leaking out of storage. It's a little hard to tell sometimes. Okay, excess leads to resign. Yes, that makes sense. Granted, both players are kind of accessing. In fact, let's just double check what's going on here with the excess. Metal excess. The warning is a little bit higher than Saniac, but only by a few hundred metal. Z. Only a few hundred metals. More. Or... I just realized there's only a unit for metal. Just metal. Just like 500 metal. That's... I just never saw, thought of how grammatically weird that is until just now. Well, anyway, 500 metal excess is the difference between the warning and Zaniac right now. And Zaniac has managed with some difficulty, but eventually but they have, after a fashion, managed to get their economy ahead of the warnings. The warning just now getting their energy back up for that, and Bolas able to... Oh, not quite able to get rid of the Lotus. Good to know, Lotus is at least... So just the one Lotus can beat a weakened Bolus. Same time, though, boys coming into the lake, and not a whole lot in place to stop them. I mean, they are skirmishers. They are basically going to be roughly the same range as the scalpel. Doing roughly the same job as the scalpel. Getting... Quite a few hits in, though. Now they have the lake taken over. The warning can just... So the warning at this point can easily take the western side expansion. Zaniac will end up with a lower amount of metal, and then from there... It's not too hard to break into the main base. Zaniac has switched over to tanks, however, or added tanks to their factory roster. This is extremely risky. I think this actually is going to lose them the game. Just because of the fact that now, as soon as this has been spotted, the warning realizes, oh, hey, wait a sec. My opponent is splitting their metal into a bunch of different units. I can just go ham. They don't have an army at all. They spent all their metal on additional factories and now splitting the income between two factories. Like, there is not really a whole lot of risk. Just push in and attack. And that's exactly what they're doing. Taking out the Cyclops that has been constructed. Well, there's damaging enough. There's not much point in keeping on with that. Wow, five boys basically taking the game just because... Just because of the fact that they realized, hey, you know what? There's nothing here to stop us. Unfortunately, now there is something there to stop them. Granted, it's not doing a great at doing it for cost, but of course, this is in Saniac's base, so whatever dies is going to be Saniac's reclaim. Still, the warning able to take advantage of that situation. Not able to take out the Western Expansion, but they were able to take out the Northeast Expansion with a couple of archers. And they were also able to get their metal economy up quite a bit. Is that even an F-Bot plate? Hey! I don't think we've seen a plate in a replay cast yet, but there it is. The new plate system. And his duck boy combo. Oh, and that boy did take out the stinger. So with that, there is still a Cyclops that is setting this up. Yeah, the Cyclops is probably going to have some problems. I mean, it's 
2200 metal. I don't know that it does especially well against the light units, but then again, it has just... Oh! Oh, that's gotta hurt. Completely misses. Opening things up. I mean, the main thing is, of course, the archers coming in here. Or just double boy. Okay. Not a bad idea, actually. It seems a bit weird. You think, well, why not just keep pushing into the factory? It's like, yeah, but the plate means that there's one... Like, while one comes off the pad, like, you have multiple pads, so you don't have to worry about the time it takes for the boy to actually drive off the pad, which is a pretty long time. That being said, this entire time, Saniac has managed to rebuild their economy, and now they are in a position where they are still kind of ahead of the warning, and turning this tank gambit into quite the powerful strategy. I mean, it was it was risky at first when the Cyclops was first being produced. The boys definitely came in at the right time, but unfortunately, they didn't manage to take care of the factory or take care of the commander, so Saniac now is able to turn this around, meaning the warning has to fight back against two fully built Cyclopses. They do have a good commander. It's kind of surprising, but they do. Riot cannon and rockets. Interesting choice. Any particular T-gun? No. Just napalm rockets and a riot cannon. Not a bad choice, though. Overall, the warning still does have a lot of map control. Now, with this setup, they're set up to gain quite a bit more, having taken the south southwestern expansion. However, Saniac is just getting more and more reclaimed donated. And you have to be careful. The boys are in a solid position to help deal with the tanks. And actually, for that matter, I do want to know... They can drive in the water. Okay, yeah, it's totally viable. They're choosing not to, but they don't have to avoid it. Oh, this is actually a lot of energy for Saniac going in. Oh, they have the energy to work with them, though. So it's a lot of energy for Saniac going into the repairs, but then again, they have a lot of energy to work with. In fact, they're accessing metal as is. Oh, that is tricky. Okay, so they're accessing metal because the opportunity cost of repairs. Because the caretakers are repairing, they aren't assisting the construction of the, fact of the unit in the factory, which means they aren't using the metal causing it to excess. So while they are repairing an existing Cyclops, they aren't helping produce a larger army of Cyclopses, and so wasting the metal that's already there. Okay, Dying Flurry pointing out in chat that the Warning has only managed to really deal with their excess by morphing the commander, while Saniac put their excess into units. So while it was... It was a bit of a risky play early on, and that Cyclops like, could have been destroyed, the fact that it wasn't does put Saniac quite a ways ahead in terms of army value. And the three Cyclopses are going to be tricky to deal with. Even with all these boys, and there are a lot of boys, I and mean, don't get me wrong, it's, that's a lot of boys. 32 boys on the map, like, all, how many are here? 20 just right next to the Cyclopses, that's not nothing. Now, if you do the math on that, that's 150 on the Cyclops is, what, 10,000 health? 12,000 health? 12,000 health. Yeah, so that's 3,000 every cycle for all of them. It's not nothing. But at the same time, the Cyclops is still fast enough that it really doesn't care. Just gonna go, you know what? Nope, I'm just gonna keep going. Although, on the other hand, the second Cyclops is in a reasonably good position to be countered. The boys came around, but no, the boy is just chasing that first Cyclops into the corner, which I guess gets rid of it, but now the warning has no use to deal with anything Saniac throws at them. And Saniac, setting up a cornea, probably going to morph that into an iris. And then, yeah, there's the morph. Now we get cloaked snitches coming in, and that'll just be used to get rid of all the boys. Or boys, or whatever. I'm trying to remember which way I pronounced it that really annoyed people. Because now I'm pronouncing it like three different ways. In the same sentence. Boys, boys, boys. I think it was boys was the way I was doing it before. Anyway, the boys are just about to get rid of that one Cyclops. Ooh, actually, if they do this in the Warning's territory, that would be advantageous. But again, it may not matter. 
Well, Cyclops did go down. Kind of separated from everything else. But Snitch is coming in here. There they go. Come in. Get rid of a bunch of boys. Gives away the game somewhat, but hard part is figuring out where the heck that Iris even is. Oh, did they... Oh, nice call! Just attacked ground in the perfect location. Nicely done the warning. Bit of a guess, but it worked out. Spotted the snitches coming in here. Only one boy was lost. That's actually room to get back in here. That being said, I would recommend it. I think you can line move this? Or can you line move this? I don't remember. Yeah, you can. Hold Alt, you can. But yeah, you have to hold Alt to make that work. Just doing that will be a target. Hold Alt will be attack ground on a bunch of different points. So yeah, if you wanted to... If you want to do what Morning did, but a bit more efficiently, hold Alt and just drag out a line. And then it'll just... The boys will just attack across the entire ground. Yeah, this one even Cyclops is to the left. Oops. Just the... Oh my goodness! The boys actually did their job. Just the one Cyclops left. The snitches haven't been efficient enough at actually getting rid of the boys. There's still... No, there's still 15 in play. But seven here. Now the three snitches coming in. Gets rid of most of the rest of the boys. That could be it for the warning. Saniac is doing a great job with their efficiency. Although the warning pulling everything back here. Oh! I didn't notice that. I can't select these. There are actually quite a lot of boys left. They're just they're just retreating. Interestingly done by the warning. I didn't expect I'd never actually seen anyone really use retreat zones that much. Unfortunately, while it's still an experimental thing, repair zones and the like don't yet exist, so it's a little bit tricky to set up the actual repairs, like this conch isn't repairing all the units over here. Granted, there's also not a lot of energy to do the repairs with, so I can't say I blame them. The warning is running low in energy to the point that they are accessing, despite pouring all of their energy, all their metal into their factories. Because the repairs just are that costly. Like, honestly, at this point, I would recommend the warning use a bunch of this metal to build a fusion power plant. I'm not joking, like, get, get a fusion plant. Possibly here-ish, or maybe here-ish. Like, somewhere defensible, but far enough away from the base that the explosion doesn't kill everything. Actually, yeah, here would be best. Put a fusion plant right here. Like, I put a fusion plant here and then put solars down here to form a bit of a wall just so that nothing can easily squeak by and kill the fusion plant. That way it connects to the grid, doesn't get hit. I don't see the warning doing that, though. I'm not quite sure, quite sure they realize they are... Well, but they do realize they're in a dire situation when it comes to energy, but I don't think they quite realize how much. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, this is only using, f yeah, five energy per second. What the heck else is burning energy? There's no shields. There's no clo- Oh, wait a sec. Yes, there are. Well, the warning's commander is only burning. No, they're not burning that much energy. That minus eight is net, so that's that's fine. Minus eight combination of all this stuff is like minus forty, minus fifty. Seventy eight should be more than enough. I'm really confused. Is there any indication? No. Not in the spectator view anyway. That is weird. That is really weird. Well, at any rate, the warning managed to get back their energy somehow. I focus. I got a bit hyper focused. I'm. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, people pointing in chat that Saniac don't really have doesn't really have enough units to stop the warning. And the warning is not really worried about being raided. They're just setting up an army to go in for the kill. Which honestly, I got. I'm actually really impressed. That that displays a lot of discipline. It's often really hard to avoid the temptation of just going in consistently with units and tr 
and instead holding back and trusting that you are outbuilding your opponent. But the Warden has clearly realized at this point that Saniac has invested so much into single heavy units, and so many of these heavy units have died, that the Warden can really just afford to hang back, build up their territory, get their economy really strong, build up their army, and then go in for a single big attack. Like, the Warning, they are, they are very disciplined. That is an amazing skill to have. Like, that, that level of game sense and discipline is key. Now, granted, I haven't seen enough of the Warning's play to know whether or not that is truly game sense or just hesitation. Like, the trick is knowing when to do it. Sometimes you have to attack consistently. Sometimes you have to raid a lot around the map. And sometimes the, what the Warning is doing is best. And right now, what the Warning is doing is... A good call. Though Saniac starting to pull a bit ahead in terms of metal income. Like, there's a really easy raid spot here over the western side of the map, which has not been taken. And these snitches are starting to become a bit of a thorn in, in the warning side. They're losing a lot of boys to snitches. And despite that earlier clever use of attack ground, it is still just consistent use of snitches. More attack ground coming in. The snitches were spotted, but it's not enough. That's it for the boys. They're done. Yeah, they're they're done done. Ducks are coming in instead as the replacement, which Oh! Oh man! Saniac just got all the value in the world without one snitch. Oh, that has gotta hurt. The warning, you are you are line moving. I don't Okay, it's just that your units are close enough the snitches can take care of them. Oh, I uh, I take back what I said regarding patience. I mean, okay, not patience so much as just game sense. The fact that the warning is not attacking, uh, people pointing in the chat that the warning is not raiding this western side of the map. And yeah, that is becoming a problem. The warning is clearly, they have become, like, while they are being a bit patient in terms of army size, they're impatient in terms of how they're trying to win this game. They aren't going in for the raids. They aren't trying to, like, the, the thing to do, especially before they lost like 60 ducks and 20, 30 boys to snitches and snitches alone. The thing to have done, and it may be too late now, would have been to, although oh, Commander Saints Commander goes, does go down, that's not bad, but the thing to have done would have been to attack the Western Mexes and then attack the Eastern Mexes and then maybe go around the back and take some of this stuff out as well. Like, kind of hit the edges, hit the edges and slowly make thinner and thinner circles into the main base. That way, Saniac simply cannot rely on these outside expansions to provide them the resources needed to keep going against the Warning. Because now, between the Reclaim and the fact that the Warning lost a ton of units, like between the Reclaim and the Attrition, Saniac has pulled way ahead in a game that they were dead to rights lost on. Like, they, it was over. The Warning had it. They had the Army's Hedge advantage, they had certainly the Mobility advantage, Saniac could not count on them blow for blow when it and it still really can't count on them blow for blow when it comes to any kind of raiding or territory control. But the warning simply isn't contesting the territory on the western and northeast side of the map. They're not contesting the outskirts of Saniac's territory. And Saniac cannot defend those. That's just not gonna happen. Saniac's units are too are too few and too slow to be able to do anything about raids anywhere on the map outside of the main base. Saniac's only defensible position is their main base, which, luckily for them, is the only point the Warning is actually paying any attention to. If the Warning attacked anything else, Saniac would be hooped. Although, Diamondfront and Driscalius have a bit of a conversation in chat pointing out that Ogres would get rid of the Ducks no problem, despite the consistent construction of Cyclopses. Which is a fair point. But considering the productive capacity that Warning has, I don't think it's relevant. Like, yeah, Ogres would get rid of the Ducks, but then boys would just come in in response. Oh, that being said, the Warning is has clued in that taking a side mechs cluster would be a good idea. This, I don't know, those Saniac, they still have so much reclaim to work with. The donations from all the Ducks and boys that died, I could see Saniac using that to carry them to a victory. Because, yeah, the Cyclopses aren't great at dealing with the Ducks. But that's what the Snitches are for. The Snitches get rid of the Ducks. Well, they would. When they're Iris cloaked, they get rid of the Ducks. 
The Cyclopses are there to get rid of the main base. And that is what they're going to do if nothing stops them. And it's not like anything is going to stop them. And these ducks, see, this is where the ducks should go from a flanking position, take up a line here, and then just move in consistently across the side. Or they could have been split in half and half of them went over here, half of them went over here. That being said, the Cyclopses are getting in a little bit of an awkward position. I don't want to say they're trapped. I think they'll be fine. The Ogre's already here. Snitch is already here. Not a whole lot. Like, these ducks are going to suffer massive losses, even if they do kill the Cyclopses, which is a little unlikely. Although, okay, one Iris does go down, but at the same time, half a dozen ducks follow. One Cyclops goes down, maybe a second? Yeah, both Cyclopses do go down. Ooh, Saniac might have just thrown the game away right there. The snitches are still in play. Or a few snitches are still left. Oh, this is where the... Alright, there we go. That is where the replay stopped. Alright, now we're going to continue. Oof. Well, lobsters... I feel like those are bait more than anything. Wait, the warning. Don't tell me you're going to throw in the towel right now. What? Really? I mean, clearly they had some strategy to work at this, but they were winning. Like, seriously, metal used, 4K higher. Metal excess was way lower. The Saniac was actually accessing a ton of metal. Army value was neck and neck. Total value was absolutely neck and neck. Economy value was a little bit lower for the warning. Saniac had more in the way of energy infrastructure. Again, they had fusion plants, which I think the warning really should have built. Other value, yeah, the warning had their commander. The warning was less less efficient in combat near the end, but mostly just snitches were really well placed in the last quarter of the game. But that's about it. Even with that, the warning was still just about neck and neck when it came to army value and could have easily raided out the sides of Saniac's base. But then again, half an hour, that is a long game. I'm not going to say I'm, I totally blame them. It's just they were winning. I think, okay, I think it was the warning that requested this, and it's like, well, the one advice I'd give you is don't throw the game away when you are in a good position. But yeah, honestly, the warning, if they had just raided the edges with the ducks, like, split into multiple forces, sent a small force here, a small force there, like, you would have taken it. And, yeah, that is a thing. Like I like I said, I'm very impressed by how the warning stuck to getting a solid-sized army going. They didn't attack with forces that were too small. They didn't attack with you know, ragtag groups here and there to the main base. They attacked with full-on assault forces. The problem was they were attacking into the only area Saniac could actually defend. Because Saniac was going for a lot of heavy, slow units. And if they attacked the edges... Saniac wouldn't have had a chance to deal with it. And Warning could have just continued to creep in and maintain a, a tighter and tighter contain until finally Saniac would have been stuck and the Warning would have wiped out their entire base. So yeah, that was... That was that. That was a, that was a weird game. Anyhow, the next game is going to be between Made Honestly and Masper, a couple of players I've never seen before and hopefully aren't going to be too put out by being on stream. I don't know if they are even aware about this. But it's also on one of the new maps. It's also one of the new maps. The Granted, it's one of the less... Flashy new maps? But yeah, it is on Cobalt Dream. Which is kind of an alien desert, red comedy type thing. So we'll check that out in a sec. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. And I just realized I should have said Doom Patrol. Alright, 